You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, and here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something you know me on Twitter. The, the Twitter is game is a blast. Some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of Moonlight Castle. So y'all, before we jump into it, just want to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. You're leaving? Ooh, yep, got stuff to do. I'll see you later at Russell's. Liam left the room, and it was just me alone with Clyde. I couldn't stop thinking that the Lynx might have decided to leave because of what I said. Come here, sit down. Gently, Clyde tapped the top of the seat that I usually sat on, and he was at the same time working on his laptop. He really was incredible at multitasking. How do you feel? Uh, I don't know. I'm feeling so many things, I can't explain it. I feel confused and annoyed, but also guilty. Am I upset? Let me tell you something, Joel. This stays between you and me, okay? Slowly, I nodded, and the dragon put away his laptop so that he could pay his full attention to me. You're a very kind-hearted person, and it shows. I like how you always care about others, even the ones you just met. You think that's bad? No, absolutely not. Quite the opposite. I apologize if my wording misled you. That wasn't the message I tried to convey. Even if my face was saying otherwise, I wasn't upset at him. Good deeds are seldom forgotten, though mistakes are bound to happen at times. Still, when such times arise, so long as the past deeds are remembered, everyone deserves forgiveness, and they shall receive it. That includes you too, Joel. His words cheered me up. Cheered me up. To him, I must be like an open book. So, you think this won't ruin our friendship? What a silly beagle you are. I bicker with Blake all the time. Yet we're still friends, aren't we? I'm sure nothing has changed. But, so please, uh, try to let it go. I took a deep breath. For me, it wasn't easy, but Clyde was trying his best to cheer me up. Therefore, I should try my best, too. Are you done with your classes today? Yeah, my schedule for today is kind of empty. I'm pretty much done or already done. I have another meeting soon. I'm sorry I have to leave you, but you know how it is. I understand. I'm going, then. Have a good day. Um, Joel? The dragon tapped me on the shoulder as I turned around, and he was leaning in to face me up close. I could even feel his whiskers touching my cheeks. Are you going to be fine? I can arrange my I can rearrange my appointments if you need help. You're already going in to join us tonight. It won't, compli that, won't that complicate your schedule even more? It seemed to me he had a hard time trying to disagree with me, yet he forced out of it. And he forced out of himself a negative answer. Just a bit. Nothing unusual for me. Don't increase your work your work workload for me. I'm fine. Seriously. Are you sure? Do you mean it? I'm going to get mad if you lie to me. Yes, I'm sure. You have more important things to... Clyde grabbed me by the shoulders and pulled me in for a hug. It was difficult for me to hide the embarrassment on my face, but the warmth was very comforting. There's nothing more important than making sure that our friends are okay. You understand that, don't you? Prez! Calling for Clyde, a voice came from the corridor, and it was followed by several knocks on the door, which soon, which was soon opened by uh, by the hasty visitor. Quickly, I broke free of Clyde's embrace, scared that someone might see us together and get the wrong idea. It happened way too often, and I didn't like it very much. Yes, I'm here. A woman walked in, carrying a lofty tower of envelopes and barely keeping balance. Oh, no. As soon as Clyde saw that, he pulled me out of the way so that she could make it to his desk. What are those? I asked him as the lady dumped everything on his desk. Those are the worst nightmare a council president has to face. I took a gulp and wondered what kind of insane task Clyde had to deal with. Love letters. Without a word, I stared at him. What? Those ladies make it their mission to constantly write me letters about romances and fantasies. Only occasionally there are a few letters of complaint, but even then they're mostly made up just so they can get a chance to meet me in private. It's exhausting. I'm pretty sure that's not something every council president has to go through. He chuckled as if he thought I was joking, but I was very serious about it. You silly dog, of course. Every council president has to deal with this. If you were in my position, you'd certainly receive them too. In disbelief, I just stared at the dragon. As he saw the lack of expression on my face, he began to realize that I wasn't joking. So you know, water time. It's, it's just not the part where you say you were joking and then agree with me. I didn't answer him. He turned to look at his secretary, probably a good sign of approval, but she didn't give it to him either. Promptly, the secretary dodged Clyde's eyes and picked up a random document from the pile, pretending to be reading it. I think it's time for early tea. He looked upset, and I felt so sorry for him. I never expected he believed that receiving an excessive amount of love letters was a normal occurrence for anyone. Can I help somehow? I'm afraid not. Regardless of the contents, these are still private letters. 
Therefore, no students outside the council are allowed to read them. However, if you ever consider joining the council, you'd be more than welcome. I rested my palm atop the side of my forehead, unsure of what to say. Joining the student council wasn't exactly something one could easily do without thinking it through, through first. It was an important decision that would totally affect my routine. I'll think about it. It's fine. You don't have to. There are tons of there are tons of work there are tons of work here, and I myself wouldn't recommend you to join the council unless you had the right mindset. I'll be going then. Sorry. Clyde waved goodbye to me as I walked out. After I closed the door behind me, it took exactly one step of walking before I bumped my face into someone's chest. Oh my god, my bad, I, I didn't see you. I was too busy panicking to recognize the person I ran into. All my mind was focused on was the fact that I was diving headfirst into a guy's fluffy chest. It was utterly embarrassing. My hat tilted to cover my face like a falling curtain. Yo, Joel, it's me! Casually, Patrice grabbed my hat and pulled it, up, pulled it up along with my head so that I looked at his face. He must have thought that I'd feel less embarrassed if I knew I'd bumped into a familiar face rather than a stranger, but actually it didn't help me feel any better at all. Have you seen Dylan? We were supposed to meet up for our daily training. Uh, Ryan dipped out on joining us, and I really wanted a partner. The latter part of his sentence got stuck in my got stuck in a loop in my head. My face was still leaning on his chest, and I could totally sense the smell of sense the smell of his sweat. Did he already leave? I figured he'd be here to help Clyde. I took a deep breath, trying to control myself before he had a chance to notice that I was having a breakdown. Yes, he was here, but, but he left a while ago. I wonder what happened. It's not like him to show up when show up when we already agreed to meet. Just as I calmed down, listening to Patrice made me realize that what I'd said to Dylan either earlier did, st did stick in the crocodile's mind. Do you know where he went? Maybe I should search for the other floors. No, but, but I can help you. Help me search for him? Actually, I really didn't want to see Dylan right now. I had no idea what would happen if we met. I was scared. No, not that. I caught myself saying that and regretted it. You helped a partner to train, right? I can help you with that. Uh... Patrice moved backward to get a better look at me. He was mumbling something under his breath the entire time he was evaluating my body. You look more like a nerdy type, but don't strike me as someone who exercised. Well, if you did, Ryan would, would have told me and most likely dragged you along. I screamed internally. This tiger knew my childhood friend well, and the things he said were accurate. I wanted to start. I don't, I don't move much, and I thought I could use some training. Fine, then. I'm not going to waste time looking for that ungrateful crocodile anymore. Come with me. I'll give you a, I'll give you a beginner's lesson. I thought I, was, I thought I was spared the moment I convinced the tiger, so I didn't pay much attention to what he was saying, as I was mostly looking for anything that he just that just to keep him busy. You're lucky I'm a gym trainer. I'll gladly make a program that works for you. Sh show me what you can do. He winked at me, and that was when I realized I'd made a mistake. Go easy on me. It's been a long time since the last time I had a serious exercise. No worries. I know exactly what we can try. I didn't know why, but the way he said that made me feel uneasy. Something about it just seemed a little off. He placed his arm around my neck and pulled me closer to him as, he, as we walked down the hallway. Okay, listen carefully now. I want you to answer truthfully about what I'm about to ask you. I took a gulp as he was whispering into my ear. He was so close, way too close. I hadn't forgotten what had just happened a few, just a few minutes ago, and now all I could feel was his breath rubbing against my neck. What's your ideal boyfriend like? Not just personality-wise. Also, I want to know about the kind of body you're into. I blushed at the question. I thought he was going to ask something important or worse, confront me about how I was pretending to be interested in working out. Second like, you now, water time. Hmm. Oh, that's good. Um, I don't know. Ryan is a big dummy. He has muscles, but also lots of fat. Is he your type? I don't want to continue this discussion. My brain expanded on the things that he was saying to me. My mind trailing off into weird thoughts. I couldn't speak properly. You don't even know if I like boys. Patrice pulled himself away from me up upon hearing that. Fuck! I assumed you were gay, too. I was so sure that you were. I shushed him with a sudden noise that resembled half a cough and half a choke, trying to buy time to collect my thoughts. I am, but you're going too fast. Uh, my bad. I can't help it, especially when I'm seeing someone this good-looking. This tiger was too dangerous. He was such a smooth talker, and I was a sucker for compliments. Anyway, to answer your question, I have no preference. As long as he's a nice guy that makes me feel good, he's fine. I tugged down my hat out of shame for admitting such a thing. Ha! No running away! I'll stop if I'm making you uncomfortable. Slowly, I peeked at him from inside my shell. My nose sprang up a little as I lifted my hat. You promise? Yes, I was only trying to get to know you better. It always works at the gym, but I guess introverts find it weird. You always do that to everyone? Most times, yeah. It works best when I'm taller than them. 
Part of me wanted to ask him if he was really able to pull it off on everyone, but I figured that I should avoid bringing Dylan into the conversation. There we are. The yard is my favorite place to get our bodies going and, more, and our muscles sore. I took a step back into the hallway. He better correct himself. I'd be fine with the sweating, but I wouldn't say the same about getting sore. Don't worry, it's nothing bad. Patrice began to move around and showed me what to do, and I was simply following along. He never took his eyes off me. It seemed he was testing my stamina, speed, and endurance. I had a feeling that my performance wasn't exactly the only thing he was looking at. However, I couldn't really prove it. You move quite fast for someone who doesn't exercise much, but your stamina is still lacking. Yeah, I think I could see that. Let's do some stretching. Do you know how? But don't force it if you don't if you feel any kind of pain. I tried to I tried to follow him, but I couldn't, as I wasn't flexible enough. He tried to help me by holding my body in place, but it still wasn't really going well. Don't get discouraged. This is your favorite this is your first time in years. Eventually your body will wake up and we can slowly help you get stronger. We? What do you mean? You should join us. Ryan will be thrilled to have you. We can customize a session just for you. I know exactly what we can try. I'd love to, but I'm not sure. I don't think I'll be able to keep up with you guys. Dude, trust me. I've done this job for a while. You aren't the first and won't be the last. I know exactly how what will work best for you. I can't afford it, though. Gyms can be pretty expensive, and the money I have right now goes to my groceries and medicines. Listen, my gym offers a one-week free trial. If you like it, good. If you don't, then you can quit whenever. To me, that's a win-win. I'll think about it, okay? Sure, text me about it. Well, text me about it whenever. I'll try to get them to assign you to me. The training didn't last long. I got tired quickly. My body was definitely out of shape. Patrice is giving me most likely the easiest lesson he could give, yet I was almost dying. Truly, that was embarrassing. Don't be sad. Come here and rest with, rest with me under the shade. Patrice patted the grass next to him. He found us a comfortable spot under the tree. I crawled there and sat with him. Quite nice. The breeze makes me feel better. It was a peaceful moment between him and me. I well deserved rest after a tiring workout. I like to lie on the grass and watch the sky. It's a bit cloudy today. You can't see much. I like to watch the clouds move. I think it's relaxing. I could kind of understand making making shapes out of the clouds, but just watching them move? That's new. He chuckled and placed his arms behind his head to use them as a pillow. It must be a special tiger then. Like, can I ask you something? Sure. What is it? I can't stop thinking about how different you are today from how you were the first time we met. How? Was I... Oh. Oh. So, you know. Mm. And there goes the last of that. Alright. I saw him struggle to come up with an answer. You know what I mean, right? You were so confident and strong just now, opposite to how you were yesterday. It was just that supernatural bullshit. Those kinds of things really freaked me out. You wouldn't understand. Did something happen to you? I mean, if you're comfortable sharing it, it's not a nice story. I want to hear it anyway? If you want to tell me about it, all right. I guess I'll just tell you the story. It happened when I was a kid. We were on our way back from the pool. It was just an ordinary summer day with my family. Nothing special. I was told that a car hit us from the side. The impact was so hard that I lost consciousness the moment it happened. I don't remember the details, but I do remember how the car looked afterward. I could feel the shift in his tone. His voice was shaky as he tried to put together his words. He was probably trying to keep his cool and appear, ca appear casual, but I could see that it was difficult for him to do so. It's awful. God, I wasn't expecting that. Don't worry. Neither, one, neither my family nor I was injured. That's a relief. Yeah, at least my family didn't die. Patrice clenched his fists, his body tensing up. The brightness in his eyes was replaced with a sorrowful blight. Someone else did. I was silent. I didn't want to interrupt him, and I was afraid that it might say something stupid. I woke up outside the car, and I was lying against the wall or something. I'm not sure if someone put me there or if I got there myself. Maybe the people who witnessed the crash helped me, but I don't remember it. The tiger took a deep breath. It was a sight that I'll never forget. I think time itself stopped so that I could burn the scene permanently into my memory. I put my hand on his chest, trying to get him to stop telling the story. I'd rather not know if it, and I'd rather not know if it meant making him go through this trauma again. I never wanted to relive those horrible memories like this. I didn't know what to do. I just froze there, scared, as the blood as the blood poured everywhere and dyed everything red. Patrice. I wanted to just scream, get up and run away, but it felt like my body had stopped working. That's enough! Hmm. His eyes widened. It seemed he was beginning to snap out of it, though it appeared he didn't realize how much he'd been carried away by his story. Awkwardly, the tiger laughed it off. Too much? That's not the problem. I'm fine. It happened a long time ago, and I'm over it. 
All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.